Have you ever questioned why Congress does not reduce spending and balance the budget? The answer will shock you. They can't. Not even if they remove every department, employ, as well as the military. I'm Hal Mason, a retired accountant, and have worked with budgets over 40 years. This February, the White House released the United States budget. I was stunned to discover Congress can't balance the budget, even if they shut down the government. The dilemma facing Congress is startling. Watch as you see a budget that can't be balanced. To understand Washington's budget dilemma, we simply click on the President's budget for fiscal year 2013. Page 210 provides 12 years of budget data. We will only look at this year, 2012. Washington will spend $3.8 trillion. However, it will only collect $2.5 trillion in taxes, resulting in a deficit of $1.3 trillion, an amount larger than what Congress appropriates to operate the federal government. Now to explain the dilemma. Government spending is broken down in three simple categories. Interest, mandatory programs, which is entitlements and government pensions, and the federal government, which is called discretionary programs. It breaks down the government in two pieces, security-related, which includes the military, and non-security, which encompasses any spending that is not related to the nation's security, such as Department of Education, Energy, etc. We simply cross out the federal government, and the remaining cost exceeds all tax revenues. The problem is simple. Spending for mandatory programs and interest is greater than the tax revenues collected. Mandatory programs include Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, unemployment, and federal pensions. Congress must pay the interest and has promised to pay the pensions and entitlements. So the dilemma they face is that after the checks are processed for mandatory programs and interest, there isn't one dollar left to fund the military or any federal employee department or office. You now understand their dilemma. To balance the budget, Congress would either have to raise taxes 50% or eliminate the federal government. If they cut entitlements and pensions, our nation will have riots like Greece. The United States only collects $2.5 trillion in taxes. More than half comes from income taxes, a third from payroll taxes, and the remaining from excise, estate, duties, and some miscellaneous taxes. These aren't quite enough to even pay for the interest or the mandatory programs. Selecting Historical Table 7.1 reveals a grave problem. Spiraling debt that exceeds 100% of the gross domestic product. A liability that exceeds our nation's annual economy. And as I chart the debt, it reveals Washington's uncontrollable addiction to borrowing. The budget projects this year over $16 trillion debt and $26 trillion this decade, soaring debt that has the United States on a path identical to Greece. And if you thought Greece was a problem, the United States has 32 times their debt. $16 trillion is 25% of the world's gross domestic product. As Washington is racing toward the cliff, there is no hint of slowing down. And for the first time in our history, the United States has lost its AAA rating on its treasury debt. Greece provides a preview of what happens when a nation is forced to deal with massive debt. Greece recently was downgraded to the lowest rating on the scale. Investors lost 70 percent in the recent European bailout, and the bailout of bonds are now rated as junk bonds. The question is not if, but when the United States will collapse from the weight of the soaring debt. And we need to ask, what are we paying these Washington intellects to do? They have no approved budget, they borrow every dollar to operate, and they estimate debt will soar to 26 trillion. Instead of solving the crisis, they raise the debt ceiling. There is a tipping point where the debt can no longer be sustained. So our nation can either get involved or be buried in the ashes. So you ask what can be done to correct this crisis? The answer is painful. First, Washington must admit the problem. Second, 
it must explain the problem to everyone. And third, we must face the pain of fixing the problem. It won't be solved by arguing over who pays the highest fares on the sinking Titanic. Everyone is going to feel the pain, as the United States must cut into entitlements, pensions, government spending, as well as get a fair tax code that doesn't cripple the economy. Everyone must vote for representatives who will focus on the financial solvency of the United States. If not, we will all go down with the ship.